When I was going through my treatments, it was really hard for me to sleep at night even though I was tired all the time. I found out later that there's a lot of people that experience the exact same thing. So just in case some of you guys are, I wanted to talk to Dr. Sheila Garland. She is a sleep and cancer researcher out at Memorial University in Newfoundland. And so I wasn't able to fly out there and talk with her, but I did talk with her over Skype and I recorded that conversation so that you guys can gain some of the wisdom that she's gleaned from over 10 years of research on sleep and cancer. So let's see what she has to say. Okay, so um, I think probably one of the uh, biggest things that patients will report is either that uh, they slept fine before they were diagnosed with cancer and then all of a sudden they can't sleep or they didn't really sleep well and then definitely with the cancer treatments their sleep got a whole lot worse. So we do know that um, cancer diagnosis and treatments themselves are associated with an increased risk of sleep disturbances and often patients are not made aware of this prior to going in. Well, so even if you go pr prior to uh, initiating their treatment, obviously the psychological impact of the cancer diagnosis itself can cause um, what should be, you know, a temporary disruption in sleep. Um, as long as the initial emotional consequences of the cancer diagnosis are addressed, the temporary sleep disturbances will, um, will resolve with time. However, then if you add chemotherapy on top of it, chemotherapy is known to disrupt circadian rhythms. We're not exactly sure the mechanisms of why chemotherapy can disrupt circadian rhythms, but we do know that there's certain behavioral changes changes um, or uh, things that people change in their uh, schedules that can increase the likelihood of experiencing um, difficulties with sleep during that time. Well, and so that's what's um, really perplexing to people is they say, you know, I'm finished all of my cancer treatment, but why am I still not sleeping very well? Um, and that's because if the initial treatment um, related or diagnosis related sleep disturbances aren't addressed, they become ingrained behavioral patterns uh, that can become chronic. So even once the initial stressor is gone or people are finished chemotherapy, those sleep disturbances become uh, persistent and pernicious in that uh, they start impacting the um, other aspects of the person's life. So Okay, so number one is that typically what people do is they try and avoid dealing with the emotional consequences of cancer. So um, this often comes out in, I'm going to keep myself really, really busy during the day. And then when I finally throw myself into bed um, at the end of the night, my brain doesn't have anything to distract itself with. And then all of these thoughts, feelings that I was trying to push away during the day, that's the time that they all come flooding back. And that sort of conditioned association between your bed and thinking, ruminating, worrying, planning, that's what increases the likelihood that those sleep disturbances are gonna become chronic. Because even when those emotional concerns aren't there anymore, you have this habit that your mind has got into that it starts to turn on as soon as you go to bed. So what I recommend is I say set aside some time and say, I'm gonna spend this half an hour, I'm gonna think about things. And then if they do start coming up later on, you can remind yourself, right? I've already dealt with that earlier. And if it still needs to be dealt with, I'll do it tomorrow. One of the big things that determines how well we sleep at night is something called sleep drive or sleep pressure. Sometimes what people do, especially when their life has been thrown upside down, is they start making changes in the time they wake up and the time they go to bed. So they say, well, I'm not at work right now. I don't need to get up at six o'clock in the morning. Why would I do that? I'm gonna start sleeping in. But if they're going to bed at 10, they don't have enough sleep pressure built up to really enable them to fall asleep. So keeping a set um, wake up time is very important, regardless of whether or not you're at work, whether or not you're under treatment, but keeping your circadian rhythm consistent is very important. Waking up is something that you can control. 
you can control really what time you start your day. Oftentimes you can't control what time you get tired, right? But you can influence it by making sure you wake up at the same time based on sleep pressure. One more really, really important too is make sure you get light, bright light in the morning and not light in the evening. If you can't get outside, even computer in the morning is good. So for the same reason, it's a good thing in the morning, it's a bad thing at night because the light that is emitted from the computer screen is strong enough to influence our production of melatonin. Um, now, melatonin is our um, sleep promoting hormone that is only produced in the absence of light. So being on any backlit devices 90 minutes to two hours prior to your bedtime can make it more difficult for you to fall asleep. Well, there we go. Some great tips that we can all do. Spend some time during the day thinking about things that may trouble us at night. Um, make sure that you wake up at the same time every morning. Uh, and don't have any computer screens uh, or phones in front of your eyes late at night. Uh, very simple things that make a huge difference. And I can attest to that because I was able to talk with her uh, right after my treatments and uh, the tips that she gave me really were able to help me sleep better. And I know that you guys can too.